know, it's difficult because um, everyone is enjoying lunch. So today I will talk about how to um, assess the quality of the new uh, genome of the color, uh, the plant genome, so all the, all the genomes you have. So um, I'm a fifth year PhD student from Michigan State University, and my cooperator Jin Feng Chen is from New Zealand Riverside, and my advisor is Dr. Ying Chiang. So we have seen so many plant genomes so far. But uh, do we know the quality of these plant genomes? We barely know because there's no such a standard to evaluate the quality of these plant genomes. So just look at the composition of these uh, plant genomes as a glance. Without noting what LTI means, you can tell LTI is the largest part of many, many plant genomes, including Norway Bruce, uh, wheat, uh, maize, soybean, all these plant genomes. Um, human genome or animal genome has less LTRs, but more of the other uh, TEs. So what is LTR? LTI is a kind of um, uh, transposable element. Um, it relies on RNA mediate to reverse transcribe themselves to achieve the uh, goal of uh, duplicating themselves. So it's actually a virus. So uh, the structure of LTR, oops, the structure of LTR is look like this. So LTR stands for long terminal repeat virtual transposons. It has long terminal repeat at both ends uh, as the LTR. And flanking the LTI, there is a TG and CA motifs, which is uh, kind of uh, very identical across different LTRs. And upon its insertion, the LTI will create a, a sticky end at each side, and so, so that uh, you will have a target site duplication after the fixation of this uh, insertion. And there are some um, coding regions in the middle. So LTI sequences is not very conserved among uh, species. So if you have, say, an LTI library from rice, it's hardly successful you, if you use it to annotate, it, uh, annotate the maze uh, LTR. So the way to work around this is to use this structure to recognize uh, LTRs every time you have a new genome. But uh, recognizing this uh, structure is quite challenging if you have the structure being disrupted either by mutation or either by sequencing errors, you'll be uh, fail in this uh, uh, goal. So how sequencing techniques affect the assembly of LTR elements? So this is the first generation sequencing or back-by-back uh, -back cycle sequencing. So basically, people just chop the entire genome into multiple back clones. Each one of them is like a 100 kilo basis. And, and for each uh, back clone, they sequence it with multiple techniques and then assemble it based on a physical map so that the assembly is in very really high quality. But if the LTR as shown here, um, as shown here is a uh, spanning the gap, the physical gap that is not covered by these uh, physical uh, clones, and you will not have this LTR being assembled. For the next generation sequencing, uh, the entire genome is shuffled into uh, short reads, and then this short read is sequenced and assembled based on computer algorithms. And because the read is really, really short, it's very difficult to expand the entire LTR, which is like 5 to 15 kilobases in, in general. So you have you expected many many these LTRs are not assembled correctly, and then you will not dis, uh, uh, deter uh, of uh, identify so many LTRs in these kind of genomes. So for the latest development of these sequencing techniques, a long read spanning the 15 to 20 kilo bases, which is exactly what is the LTR uh, the mean length is. So it's possible to span the LTR with this long read, and and although there there are some sequencing errors in this read, but using computer algorithm you can generate a consensus sequence to, uh, to fix this uh, problem so that the, the outcome of these genomes are usually very continuous and some of the LTRs still not very, uh, cannot be uh, spent. So from this concept, uh, we know um, LTR is very sensitive to the sequencing quality and if uh, you have a good genome, you have good LTR detection. So on the reverse trend, if you detect lots of LTRs, it means the genome quality is really, really high. So in that, I developed this LTR assembly index, or called LAI. So basically, it's to detect how many intact LTRs are found in the genome, conditioned on how many total LTR is exist in the genome. So, to, so you can see the uh, intact LTR elements is very determined to this uh, LAI. So the, the identification of this intact LTR is very important. And to identify intact LTRs, I, use, I developed this pipeline called LTR Retriever. It has seen it has been published earlier this year. So um, it used a, a more accurate uh, structural definition to identify LTRs more accurately without sacrificing the sensitivity. As you can see here, it's all 
also above 90% comparing to the other method. However, the specificity, accuracy, and precision of LDN retrieval is all above 90%, which means the quality of this uh, prediction is very, very high. And you can check out my uh, poster or, or my paper uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, after identifying this intact LTRs using LTR retriever, the next step is to identify total LTRs. Basically, I just use the intact LTRs uh, the normally predicted and use a blast algorithm or blast uh, search to, to identify this total LTR using sequence similarity, such as this uh, solo LTR, nest LTRs, truncated LTRs, and, and all, all fragments. So after that, um, this is the LAI. So how is uh, LAI performed? So because uh, LT LAI is relied on the, the, the existence of LTR residual transposons and the existence of LTR residual transposons is dependent on the amplification and the removal of LTR. So every species has a balance of this amplification and removal. So it's different. So this is uh, reveals the uh, relationship between the mean LTR identity, which is uh, in the which is a proxy to the, the LTR activity and the raw LAI. As you can see, the more younger the LTRs, the higher LAI, which means the more active LTR activity you have, the higher LAI. So this needs to be fixed. So after I correct for this factor, it's not uh, correlated anymore. And, and this is the age of the LTR uh, element. Also, it's not correlated after we correct for this factor. And also, uh, the solo LTR uh, representing the removal of LTRs, like you will have a recombination between these LTR pairs and generate this solo LTR, which is a dead end of the LTR. And then um, after the correction, the removal itself is also not correlated to the LAI itself, which means LAI is pretty independent of the LTI activities right now. So I also use a uh, whole genome, forward, sequence, uh, whole genome post forward simulation to uh, benchmark the performance of LAI. So basically I just choose a couple high quality uh, plant genomes and randomly cast mutations on these genomes uh, with different degrees. So each stop is uh, one simulation. And for these uh, mutations, you can translate it back to the, the time billion years. So the longer the the longer the evolution, the LTR will be degraded and not detected anymore, which is representing the degradation of the LTR trend. So you can see the raw LAI decreased linearly, but the uh, LAI itself does not change that much, which means the LAI after correcting for LTR activity is very robust to this uh, LTR activity. So this is the summary of uh, existing plant genomes. It's about 50 of them. Um, you can see this, uh, the intact LTR is linearly correlated with the LAI. This is what we designed uh, at the beginning. And uh, after the correction, the um, total, LTR, total LTR content as shown here and the genome size is not correlated to the LAI, which means any plant genomes with various LTR content and various uh, um, uh, LTR content and genome size, you can apply LAI on your genome. And this is a correction after the correction is not correlated to LTI activity. And this is a Bushu and Sigma score, which is used to um, uh, benchmark the gene space assembly. It's also not correlated to LAI, which means you can have a very good gene space assembly, but you may not have a good uh, repeat space assembly. And LAI is slightly correlated to the contact M50, like the, the contact size. Yeah. So this is a summary of uh, 90 plant genomes uh, across different platforms. This is a back by back, which is a gold standard, and the Sanger based uh, whole genome shotgun sequencing, 454 power sequencing, and uh, Illumina short reads, and this is a long read sequencing. As you can see, these three techniques yield genome assemblies equally good, uh, uh, has an equally good LLI score, which is around 15. And the short read based uh, genome sequencing is not very good at resolving these uh, repetitive sequences. And as I told, um, the LAI is independent of genome size and the LTR content, which means you can actually run LAI on a region, not the entire genome. So this is the, the concept. So I run LAI based on three, meg three megabases uh, regions, and then you can detect the low quality L uh, gen uh, genome regions, which you can improve it further. And this is an interesting, interesting case. This is a rice casalas genome, it's a sequence the chromosome one is sequenced based on the Sanger back by back and the sample based on the physical map. And the rest of the chromosomes are just sequenced by uh, short read. So you can see a drastically different uh, LI score of the 
same species. And this is the maize genome uh, from version 2, version 3, and version 4. The 2, 3 is sequenced by Sanger, Sanger back by back, and the version 4 is sequenced by pack bio sequencing. As you can see, the um, slowly increasing of the LAI in the first two versions, and the drastically uh, improvement of the genome quality using the uh, long read sequencing. And LAI can also help to choose the best assembly. So this is rice, uh, adoptis, and maize, and this is uh, solanum penelii. With different platforms, different uh, uh, chemistry, this is the short, short read based, uh, next generation based sequencing uh, genomes. This is a reference sequence by back by back, and this is a back, back bio sequencing. So you can see um, the short read based genomes are all has a very low quality with an LAI less than 10 or around 5. And the reference is around 10 to 15, as shown here. And the pack bio one is usually exceed uh, 20 of the LAI. And you can even compare the different chemistry of this pack bio base. You see the P4, um, the P4C2 and P4, P, P5C3 yields less LAI scores and comparing to this uh, C4 platform. And uh, this is the same batch of the uh, nano, nano pore sequencing data with different assemblers. And you can see this assembler yields the highest LAI. And, and that you can just use LAI to determine which assembler or which assembly parameters yields the best uh, continuity of your, of your data. So based on our data, we pro uh, I propose a standardized classification system of the genome quality with a draft genome has LAI range from 0 to 10, such as apple and cacao genomes, and uh, with the reference quality from LAI 10 to 20, such as paradoxes and rice. With the gold quality, is LAI has uh, above 20, such as sorghum and the maize, the version 4 maize genome. So in conclusion, LAI is a new genome metric that can be used to evaluate assembling quality of the repetitive sequence base. It's independent of uh, LTR content or the removal of LTR, like LTR biology, or the genome size, and, and it's also independent of this gene space metric, FUSCO and the sigma, uh, or the LTR activity. And it's weakly correlated with quantic activity because the longer quantity you have, the higher continuity you will be, right? And now I can help to identify low quality genome regions, which can be further improved if you identify them. And now I can also help to choose the best assembly or choose the proper assembler or choose the proper assembler parameters you can set. And we also set up a standardized classification system of genome continuity. So earlier uh, this morning, there is a talk, there is an audit ask us about how do you decide which uh, genome is uh, in high quality for, your, for the analysis. You can actually use LAI and, and reveal the, the quality of your genome and then see whether your uh, analysis is uh, reliable or not. So with that, I want to thank uh, my advisor, very critical on this project and still very supportive, and, and my collaborator, Dr. Jin Tong Chen from UC Riverside. And I also want to thank the, uh, the conference venue